Hello everyone, welcome to Managerial Accounting, and this is still chapter one. But part two, what we're going to do is walk through preparing a schedule of goods manufactured, um, what appears on the income statement and the balance sheet if you are a manufacturer, i.e. you make the goods, you buy raw materials, you then add labor, you add other costs, you produce a product, and then you sell it. So the process is a lot longer than if you were a service business or if you just bought goods and sold them. So here's what the process looks like. We start with raw materials, and we always start, unless it's the company just started, we start with a beginning balance. You should always look for that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to buy goods and we're going to put them into raw materials and then we're going to turn and we're going to issue them and we're going to issue them to work in process and those would be direct materials. Those are ones that can be assigned to a job. And then we also are going to issue some to factory overhead and those would be called indirect materials. We're then going to move to work in process. We're going to again start with a beginning balance. We're going to take those materials that are issued. We're going to add direct labor and we're going to add factory overhead that is applied. We'll talk about that later. And then what we're going to do is um, again, anything that we have left over in raw materials will be part of the balance sheet and anything that we have left over in work in process will also be part of the balance sheet. And then what we're going to do is once we have completed products, we're going to send them to finished goods. And these are goods that are ready for sale and they're called goods manufactured. And again, any ending balance would appear on the balance sheet. So that's what you want to remember is ending balances of these go on the balance sheet. Now let's take a look at preparing a schedule of cost of goods manufactured and show how they're linked to the financial statements. So this is a little summary. We always start with direct materials used and that is a calculation because we have to start with beginning. We have to add purchases and any costs associated with that material. We're then going to have direct labor. We're, again, we're going to have factory overhead, which is made up of indirect costs. We're going to say this is our total manufacture costs. Then we're going to add the beginning work in process, and we're going to subtract out the ending, and that's going to give us cost of goods manufactured. Now let's take a more in-depth look at this schedule to help us prepare one. So again, we first determine material use, and we start with direct materials direct materials, we add our raw materials beginning, we then add purchases, we now have raw materials available for sale, we subtract out anything we have in the ending inventory, and that gives us direct materials used. We're then going to add the direct labor, and then we're going to look at our factory overhead, which are all our indirect costs. We're going to add that up, and we're going to get our total factory overhead and we're going to add all three of these up to get total manufacturing costs, but we're not done yet because what we have to do is add in our beginning work in process and then subtract out our ending work in process and that's how we get cost of goods manufactured. Now let's take a look at preparing one of these and what I've done is I've selected a problem that we're going to look at which is here. And what we're going to do is use this problem to prepare the cost of, schedule of cost of goods manufactured. We're then going to prepare an income statement and we're going to prepare a balance sheet. And we have all the information in this problem to do that. But what I always like to do when I start a problem like this, when I have a whole list of information, is the first thing I like to do is identify. Once I identify it, I know I'm not going to use it again. So that's something to remember when you're doing this. Now, I wouldn't suggest crossing things out because you may make a mistake and then you got to go try to fix it. So here's what I do. First, I'm going to identify all the factory product costs, including direct materials, which is easy. 
direct labor, which is easy, and then overhead. Now, overhead in this problem is anything that says factory. So we'll start by using arrows. So first thing we have is our raw materials. Those are all direct materials. Those would have gone directly into um, our uh, um, raw materials. Okay, next we're going to look at our direct labor. Now we're going to look at all the overhead costs. So again, I said look for anything that says factory on it. So we've got the depreciation expense on the factory. We've got the maintenance expense on the factory. We have the utilities. We have our indirect labor. Normally that would be like a supervisor. We would also have our rent expense. Now the other thing we need when we're doing the schedule of goods manufactured is we need these balances, i.e. the beginning and ending inventory for raw materials and work in process. And we need these for that schedule of goods manufactured. We don't need the finished goods beginning and ending until we do the income statement. All right, so now let's take a look at what that schedule looked like based on taking that information. And here we go. We start with our direct materials. And again, we're going to look at first, we're going to bring in that beginning materials inventory. And then we're going to add in our raw materials. And then we're going to take out our ending balance, which they provided. And that tells us how much we used. Next, we're going to add our labor and then we're going to do our factory overhead. Now, once we do our factory overhead, we have our total manufacturing costs. But the next thing we have to do, we always have to remember, is we want to add in our work in process beginning balance and then subtract out the ending balance, which gives us our cost of goods manufactured. So remember that we're always going to look at beginning and ending balances. We want to look for those. That's how, we, again, we get our cost of goods manufactured. So now let's take a look at what it looks like when we do an income statement. So let's look at the different types of income statements. Okay, we have a service business. Service business is pretty simple. We have revenue and we have expenses. Then we have a merchandising business. What they do is they buy finished goods, they go to inventory, i.e. a current asset, and then when they're sold, they go to cost of goods sold. The hard one to do, which is what we focus on in managerial accounting, unfortunately, is when we make something. When we make something, we've got processes that go on. All right? So we've already gone through raw materials, and work in process. Now, to get cost of goods sold, we have to start with finished goods beginning. We're going to add in the number that we got from our cost of goods manufactured schedule. That gives us our goods available for sale. We're going to take out our finished goods inventory, and that's going to give us cost of goods sold. We subtract cost of goods sold from gross profit from revenue to get gross profit. Then we subtract our selling administrative expenses and we get net income. Now again, the thing we talked about before is the difference between period and product costs. Period costs are always treated as an expense. They go to the income statement and they are selling and general and administrative expenses, also known as G&A and our cost of goods sold. Those all appear on the income statement. And that cost of goods sold reflects our goods that we've sold. Product costs are treated as a current asset. They go to inventory until they're sold. Anything that's unsold appears on the balance sheet. Now let's take a look at that same problem. So for the income statement, we need to identify the period costs, and we need to first identify selling, and then we want to do G&A. 
So we're going to start with advertising, which is always a period cost because you really can't connect it directly to a product. Then we would go to selling equipment, depreciation, then to rent for selling space, and then our sales salary. And now we'll do our G&A. We would have our office equipment, our office salaries and rent, and our rent expense office space. Now, we also need one other thing from the schedule. Of course, we need the, since we're doing an income statement, we need that sales revenue, but we also need these finished goods beginning and ending balance because that's how we figure out cost of goods sold. So let's take a look at our income statement for a manufacturing environment. So we start with sales and then we're going to determine cost of goods sold. Again, we start with that finished goods beginning inventory. We're going to add the cost of goods manufactured, which we got from that schedule we prepared, which gives us cost of goods available for sale, less finished goods ending inventory, and that's going to give us our cost of goods sold. Then we're going to calculate our selling expenses, and I showed you how I did it right here by adding up all those line items. And I'm going to do the same for the G&A. And that's how you get net income. Now, the next thing we're going to move to is the balance sheet. Now, on the balance sheet, we're going to want to show ending inventory for raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. So remember, raw materials are materials weighted to be processed. Work in process are partially completed units that include materials, labors, and overhead. And finished goods is always completed units. In this book, we can only sell from finished goods. In reality, yeah, sometimes you can take things out of work and process. But normally, what we're doing is the only way it can go to cost of goods sold is if it comes from finished goods. So here's a little schedule that shows you. Again, we start with that schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Once we get that number, we can take and put that on the income statement. And then we are going to take the work in process ending. And we're going to take the finished goods ending. And of course, the raw materials ending. And that's going to go on the balance sheet. Now, the primary difference on the balance sheet when we look at the three different types of com companies is the service industry doesn't have any. Merchandise inventory only has one line. And a manufacturing company has three categories in inventory, raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. Now let's go back to our problem so we can prepare our balance sheet. So now what we have to do is we have to identify our current assets. So we have our net accounts receivable, we have our cash, we have our raw materials ending inventory, our work in process ending inventory, and our finished goods ending inventory. And now we can prepare that schedule. And here it is. Again, we start with cash, then we do accounts receivable, net in this case, which means we've taken out allowance for uncollectibles. We're then going to list our raw materials, work and process, finished goods, and then we have our total inventory, and then we add them all up to get our total, total current assets. And that covers what I am going to cover for Chapter 1.